Hey guys, how's it going? Well, it's been a little while since I put a video up. I've got a little project I'm working on that I'm in the middle of filming, so until I get that done, I thought I would jump in and do this video. I will give you a little update on this 87 Plymouth Grand Fury. Now, if you've been following along on this channel, you know that I've had this car about eight months, I guess it is, and I've spent a lot of my spare time up till recently dealing with a lot of little issues this car had is just basically benign neglect uh, it's a really solid car it's got 98,000 miles on it and it's a 318 with a three-speed automatic transmission it's just a very kind of basic car it's air conditioning power steering power brakes but everything else is manual on it and so my goal was to get it to run good and be reliable and I think I've succeeded in that endeavor, finally. Um, if you remember, I changed this car out from being lean burn or electronically controlled spark system to just being a HEI kit that I put together to control the ignition and the distributor and all that. And then I swapped the, the carburetor out and I had repeated issues with the carburetor. Until I finally went and just got another car rider from the junkyard and just rebuilt that one and it seems to be doing good now. So anyway, today I decided to go down and see my brother and that's a 143 miles round trip and I wanted to show him my car. And of course he didn't even go out and look at it. I think he poked his head out the door, but that's that's you know that's one of the reasons why I'm glad I got you guys around because nobody I know in real life really gives a rip. But that's that. So Anyway, I drove this down and it performed very well all the way there and back. And you know, these these Mopars have a long-standing reputation for being cantankerous when it's hot. And I think we can put that to bed as just being due to the the tune, the state of tune that they were in when they were new. Because this one, I sat, I drove in the hot weather today, and I sat in traffic at traffic lights several times and idled for a long time and stopped and started it up and things like that and it never once gave any problems it just starts right up and idles fine and accelerates fine and it does not diesel or anything like that so all all that in the past that people have, you know had those complaints with those cars uh, it's basically just the way they're set up i guess you can get that out of them so they run just as good as any other one and this car, it drives good, and like I said, it runs good. It's not overly burdened with power, but it's, I think more than anything, that's because of the rear end ratio in it. It's got a, like a two, 214 or a 221 or something, 223 rear ratio in it, which is terribly high. So it's just kind of, you know, it gets you get it rolling about 45 miles an hour, and it starts taking off then pretty good, but up till then, it's just kind of, leisurely and the rear end is a little bit noise in this car it's got a little bit of gear noise in it and i don't think that's any kind of it's about to fail type noise it's just i guess when they set this rear end up originally it, they didn't do a very good job of it it's got a little bit of noise but nothing major i did put rotors on it and the brakes work well work very well so that's all good the front end is a little bit uh, you got a little bit of this still in the front end, and I've been underneath that and checked the front end out, and I believe that's all in the steering box. So I'll probably adjust that uh, steering box a little bit to get some of that lash excess, I guess you call it lash or lack of whatever, out of it. Slack. And the air conditioner is not working completely. It works out here under the hood, but... Uh, there's no cold air coming in there. The air blows, but it's not cold. It's a very common thing with these aged cars. But since it's working up here, I'm not sure what's up with it. I have a couple ideas. But it does, the compressor is doing something because the line that from the compressor to the condenser up here gets hot. So it's actually pumping. It's not, I don't believe it's broken internally or anything like that. It's got, it's got some charge in it. But I was not able to hook up my gauge set to it because somebody when they put R134 or whatever it's in it, I'm assuming it's R134, they did a half-assed job of it. 
excuse me, and they just replaced the low side feeding and didn't even bother replacing the high side feeding. So I'm guessing that I'm going to have to go in and just redo this uh, air conditioning system because it's too nice for the car to not have air conditioning. This is the one I think that's got a whatever they call that. It's not a it's not an orifice tube. GM's got an orifice tube system, but this one's got the one that's got the valve up at the firewall, I think. And uh, I've seen those get clogged up before, so it's kind of what it acts like. It acts like it's everything's kind of stopping out here. So we'll we will probably dig into that at some point. And the cruise does not work, but I think that's an easy fix because I was thinking about that on my trip today and I don't recall seeing a vacuum line being hooked up to the engine off that cruise control in fact I didn't even remember seeing it and these all use a vacuum servo I'm pretty sure of. I don't remember exactly what it looks like it's over here on the fender but uh, so we'll, we'll dig into that but it really runs and drives good I'm, you know it's it's come around pretty good uh, I think it may need shocks put on the rear of it because it kind of when you hit bump sometimes it kind of does this this kind of a wallowing thing you know in other words it doesn't really you know like, kind of if you're in like a curve or something it kind of does this sort of thing that's kind of unsettling so I put shocks from some good good shocks on the front of it and that helped tremendously so I guess I'm just gonna have to go in and get on the ones on the back and then, uh, other than that, I think everything is working well with it. So I think the long-term or short-term, whatever you want to call it, plans for this car, so I'm probably going to drive it a while longer this summer and just get everything kind of squared away with it. And then I will probably put this car up for sale because I really have too many cars, like I always do. I always say that, but I always have too many cars. And you may recall when I bought this car, I was assuming that I was going to have to have a car for work, and that was going to be my this is going to be the one I work, I drove to work every day just for the fun of it. But now that I have that Toyota over there that the company supplies me with, then, you know, I'm kind of, I kind of don't get to drive the old cars, the two that are running right now, I don't get to drive them much as it is. So this one, you know, would make somebody a good car, especially because it's in good shape, and I think somebody would be happy with it and all that. So yeah, if you're interested in something like this, just keep that in mind, and you can contact me or keep me in mind sometime during the summer and I'll probably put that for sale and all that so probably uh, be something to think about but I enjoy it it's a nice car and if anybody's wondering well do people see this and do they slow down when they're on the highway no people these days are so tuned out they don't even down in, in Huntsville and the surrounding areas they're psychos I mean Huntsville Huntsville and Madison County's got some of the worst, most psychotic drivers there are anyway. They don't even slow down for a real cop. They sure ain't gonna slow down for this one, this thing. So, but it's interesting to drive it anyway. All right, guys, there's the update. It's not too long, not too short. It's just right. So, uh, we will deal with a couple more issues on this thing and tie up some loose ends, and then we'll drive it a little bit, and then I think it's gonna go on the for sale block so anyway there's your update on the 1987 Plymouth Grand Fury thanks for watching